Well, good evening and welcome to this Reality Check Half Hour Special. Tonight, we're taking a look at a very important issue affecting just about every American. Internet bills and intellectual property. Over the past few months, you might have heard the terms ACTA, SOPA, PIPA, or CISPA. They're all acronyms for bills that have attempted to make their way through Congress with the express purpose of protecting intellectual property on the Internet. So here's what we have for you tonight. While SOPA and PIPA are no more, the latest attempt to crack down on Internet piracy is CISPA. It's alive and well and making its way through Congress. I'm going to tell you what CISPA is all about and update you on its progress. Plus, we're going to fill you in on SOPA and PIPA and show you how it was public outcry that put an end to those bills. Plus, we're going to take a look at ACTA. It is not a bill that our lawmakers have had anything to do with. Rather, it's an international treaty that the administration is taking part in. It's being used to enforce copyright law around the world. But we begin tonight with CISPA. You probably haven't heard much about it, including the fact that the U.S. House of Representatives passed that bill in a 248 to 168 vote. So what is CISPA? Here's our reality check from just a couple of weeks ago to get you caught up. The SOPA and PIPA were two separate bills that members of Congress claimed would protect intellectual property on the Internet. But the public didn't buy it. Months ago, we told you how those bills were incredibly overreaching. Well, now a new bill called CISPA is making its way through the House. So what is CISPA? The Cyber Intelligence Sharing and Protection Act. Members of Congress claim that CISPA is needed to protect the nation from cyber attacks. It sounds good. Until you actually read H.R. 3523. Then you find that the vague language would actually allow the feds the authority to override every existing online privacy law by monitoring and collecting information on anything that includes efforts to degrade, disrupt, or destroy an online system or network, or theft or misappropriation of private or government information, intellectual property, or personally identifiable information. So how close is this bill to becoming law? Well, it's moving pretty fast. The bill has widespread bipartisan support with more than 100 co-sponsors in the House. Letters of support from the U.S. Chamber of Commerce and several major technology companies are backing it, including Facebook and Microsoft. The bill's authors, Congressman Mike Rogers, a Republican from Michigan, and Dutch Ruppersberger, a Democrat from Maryland, they say that the bill was non-invasive and very limiting. In fact, the House Intelligence Committee has set up a Twitter account to show people they are in touch with the online community and to break down the myths about CISPA. But is what they're telling you true? Take, for instance, this tweet. Rogers Ruppersberger, cyber bill, keeps the federal government's hands off the Internet and doesn't allow the government to stop access to websites. But that is not true. Keeps the federal government's hands off the Internet? Well, the entire point of CISPA is to give every federal agency that already has its hands on the Internet even more information and more power. It is true that the bill itself does not have any provisions specifically relating to blocking website access, but the bill does create clear provisions for companies to give data to Homeland Security. And Homeland Security is already in the practice of seizing websites. Here's another one. CISPA includes a provision to ensure info can't be shared with the government or used under this bill unless there is a direct tie to cybersecurity. But again, that's not entirely true. Information can only be shared with the government if it's related to cybersecurity, but it can be used by the government for the purposes of cybersecurity or national security once they've got it. And as you know, the term national security and cybersecurity, those are very broad. So what are we really talking about here? Well, how about the idea that anything you do online is being private? Won't be. CISPA would authorize the private sector. Search engines, web companies, social networking sites, pretty much you name it. They could share customers' personal information and the contents of private communications with the federal government. That's already a problem. But CISPA gets much worse. If you think that the use of your private information would be limited to cybersecurity purposes, it's not. So any personal information you have on Twitter or Facebook or even Amazon.com, it's available for the feds to seize and to hold if you're suspected of any cyber crime. And that could include any blogger, for instance, who posts a reality check, which technically isn't their property. And there are no limitations on how long the government can keep that data once they have it or what else they can use it for once they have it. And that's what you need to know.
Under CISPA, once an individual's information is in the government's hands, it can be used for just about any purpose. And that's the biggest problem here. The bill's authors also admit that aside from sharing cyber threat information, the bill could be used for other purposes. But they won't say what those other purposes might be. And that is Reality Check. Never a good sign when they won't tell you what those other purposes might be. I do want to update you, though, on CISPA. As I mentioned at the beginning of this story, the House has passed that bill. It now moves on to the U.S. Senate. If passed by the Senate, CISPA would not formally grant the NSA or Homeland Security any additional surveillance authority. What it would do, though, it would usher in a new era of information sharing between companies and government agencies with limited oversight and privacy safeguards. And it's those lack of safeguards that have led tech giant Mozilla, the maker of Firefox, to state their opposition to the bill, the first major company to do so. Mozilla has told Forbes magazine, quote, while we wholeheartedly support a more secure Internet, CISPA has a broad and alarming reach that goes far beyond internet security. The bill infringes on our privacy, includes vague definitions of cybersecurity, and grants immunities to companies and government that are too broad around information misuse. In that email for, to Forbes, Mozilla goes on to say, we hope that the Senate takes the time to fully and openly consider these issues with stakeholder input before moving forward with this legislation. So Mozilla is against CISPA, but there are a lot of companies for it, including AT&T, Verizon, Facebook, and Microsoft. So how much money are these companies spending on lawmakers to get CISPA passed? And how did our local U.S. reps vote when it comes to CISPA? I'll tell you when we come back.